Yo, 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 Michael T. Porter here. Welcome to Michael T. Porter's Skits and Stories. I got another bomb episode for y'all, but before I begin, y'all hit that like button, the subscribe button, that share button. Pass me around, pass me around, Facebook, Instagram, and all other social media platforms, and y'all know how I feel about my chizzing. If you guys like to support the channel, cash app, dollar sign, Michael U.S. Also, check out my Spotify podcast, the 250 Gemstones Culture Podcast. The link is in the description. Y'all stay and watch the whole video. We need to talk. Marriage. Mm -hmm. Everybody want to get married. Everybody looking for love. Everybody that I know, everybody that I've seen, from the weirdos to the people who got it together, they want love. And the ultimate way of expressing the love, especially for men, is proposing. Two friends, Damien and Aaron, went to a coffee shop handling their business. And what they saw at this coffee shop may change their mind about relationships forever. It was the middle of September and Damien and Aaron went to this coffee shop. It was a coffee shop slash restaurant. So as they go in there, everything is good. They get their order and they go sit their behinds down. So they sitting down, they chopping it up, seeing what they wanted to do for the rest of the day. They want to go to the mall. They don't want to play basketball. They're about in their mid twenties. Did they want to go? Like I said, they want to go to uh, the mall. They want to go play basketball. They want to go with other friends. What they? What was the plan? So they both got their coffees. They both got their meals, and they chopping it up. Another couple, Janice and David. There were a couple. This is a couple. Janice and David. Janice and David, they have been dating for about a little bit over two years. And they had their ups and downs. They had their ups and downs. But it seemed like David made up his mind about Janice. He loved Janice with all his heart. And in his mind, in his heart, his soul, it was the perfect time to pop the question. Janice was acting a little funny. She's being very, I say, distant with David, but he couldn't understand why. So that same morning when Damien and Aaron were at the coffee shop, Janice and David, they were getting ready to go to the same coffee shop. So David was asking her, what's, what's going on, babe? I mean, what's going on? You acting a little funny, like something bothering you or... Uh, you're not feeling well? She was like, I think I need to tell you something, but I don't know. He said, well, I tell you what, whatever you want to tell me, it can wait. Because there's something I want to tell you, but I'm going to tell you a little bit later as well. So as they're getting ready, they're getting their clothes on. They're heading down to the same coffee shop that Damien and Aaron is at. So Janice and David, they make it to the coffee shop. They make it to the coffee shop. They put their order in and they're sitting on the opposite side of Damien and Aaron. Damien and Aaron is closer to the, uh, there's a door that leads out into the patio. So they're close to that door. And Janice and David is sitting closer to the entrance. So Janice and David sit down and halfway through the meal, David gets up and he makes an announcement in front of everybody. He makes an announcement. Now, before he makes his announcement, there's also another couple, Mr. and Mrs. Anderson. They've been coming to this coffee shop longer than anybody else up in there. They're in their mid seventies. They were they were going to the coffee shop that used to be across the street, and before they even built this one, so they they have been around in this community a long time. Mister and Missus Anderson have been they have seen it all, baby. They have seen it all in their community, so they were they love to see something new. Oh, who's they like? Who's this young man? 
who is this young man standing up and he stood up? David said, I, you guys, you guys, I just need your attention. I just need your attention for a brief moment. I have an announcement to make. Now, when a man stands up and he says in front of everybody, complete strangers, you guys, I just need your moment for a little bit. I need your attention just for a moment. Everybody knows what he's about to do. Janice knew what he was about to do. And Janice concealed her discomfort so well. She concealed it. She concealed the embarrassment so well. But he said, everybody need to make an announcement. I need to make an announcement. Then he turned to Janice. David said, Janice... We have been together a little over two years. And in my heart, I believe that you are the woman for me. Now, your mind is getting packed now. There's everybody in here. There's a younger couples, there's older couples, there's single people. It's coffee shop. You got business people. So everybody's looking. All the women and Damien, and especially Damien Airy looking around. Damien especially can see how all the girls are reacting to this man standing up, controlling the room, telling this woman how much he cares. Damien is peeping it. We've been together over two years, David said, and I believe in my heart you're the woman for me, and I don't see myself being with any other woman. From day one, I knew that my life wasn't going to be complete unless you were in it. I love you on my heart. I love you on my mind. I love you with all my spirit. I love you with all my body. I love you then. I love you now. And I'll love you forever. But I want to show you that how I want to show you how much I love you by putting this on your finger. So Janice was still sitting down. He told Janice, he uh, he reached out for Janice's hand. He said, stand up. And she really didn't want to stand up. But she got up. She's looking around. She's like, she put on this fake smile. <laughs> Janice is standing up now. David gets on one knee. Now all the girls up in here. All the girls are getting teary-eyed. All the girls. because David was a handsome handsome uh, white guy. Janice was a uh, beautiful woman. Beautiful white woman. Teardrops from all the women in the restaurant. Mrs. Anderson couldn't believe. She haven't seen a man proposed to a woman in a long time. It's been decades since she's witnessed or even heard somebody in actual real life propose to a woman. Even she started getting choked up and she ain't seen hundreds of proposals. She ain't seen it all. They're in their mid seven, they have seen it all, but to see it again, a new generation, fresh blood continuing this beautiful tradition, this beautiful ceremony called marriage. Mrs. Anderson, she got choked up too. Mrs. Anderson got choked up. Janice is standing up. David is getting on one knee. And everybody is leaning over. Everybody is, is trying to see what she going to say. What she going to say. Everybody was nervous. Everybody was nervous. Especially Janice. He got down on one knee. And he said he pulled out he uh he pulled out the ring. Now this ring was big. I don't know what David did for a living, but whatever he's doing, keep doing it, player, because you getting that money. Oh he oh David getting that money. This ring was so big, all the girls saw the size of this ring. All the girls are doing this. Oh my god, that ring is so beautiful. He busts it open. He busts that thing open. He said, Janice, my love, will you marry me? When, when he said that, he didn't say it loudly. 
He didn't say it forcefully, but just the, it sounded like his voice traveled to all the woman's ears. Got to remind you, they're not the only couple. Mrs. and Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Anderson aren't the only couple. David and Janice aren't the only couple. There's a, a few other couples in there. Now, if imagine you on a, a a coffee date with your girlfriend and she sees that. What David just did, he put a lot of men, he put, put a whole bunch of pressure on all the guys up in there. He, David didn't put the pressure on other guys because now the girls that with their boyfriends, they're looking around, well, why you ain't doing that? That's a damn good question. That is a damn good question for couples that have been together two years, three years, four years, five years, six years, how come the man that I lay with, the man that I'm supposedly supposed to be building with, how come he is not doing what David is doing? All the women who had their man with them in that little coffee shop, they did a quick glance at their boyfriend like, okay, this is a man that's serious about his woman. And every woman that was with their boyfriend who was not married, they had that same look. I'm like, okay, look, the top, the, 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 the clock is ticking for your ass. Because decisions will have to be made. That man is serious. Will you marry me? Echoed in the spirit of all the women. Single women. And married women. Because the married women. Like Mrs. Anderson. It reminded them. The first time they got proposed to. It reminded them. Of how serious. Their husbands were. About making them. Their wife. Mm, mm, mm. Will you marry me? Everybody's waiting. Everybody's waiting. Janice is looking around. Janice is looking around. And this is what Janice says, y'all. This is what Janice says. David, I can't. Oh! <laughs> she tells David, David. I, I can't marry you. Everybody was in shock. Everybody was in shock of Janice's response. They couldn't figure out, y'all a young couple, y'all look good, look like get yourself together. A man proposing in these times? Baby, you know how many women are dying to get married? To get some ice on that ring finger, to get some bling? To get some drip on that finger. She, she looked at David and uh, uh, she started getting teary. Like, David, I can't. So the whole restaurant is staring at Janice and is overwhelming because they're just putting all their business out there. She's like, do you think we can go home? And as she was asking David, can they go home and talk about this? The manager comes out because David and Janice are now... It's not a beautiful thing anymore because she said no. Now they're just disrupting business. The store manager comes out and you can tell he's a tight wall. Let me get a little sip real quick. Oh, y'all, let me get a little sip because this store manager is a goddamn mess. Hold on. Store manager is a mess. You can tell he's a buzzkill and I believe he lives an alternative lifestyle. I believe... He's a little funny. I believe he may like uh, the very thing that looks like him, right? He comes out and he's doing all this. He's like, um, you guys are disrupting my business. So I appreciate it. Whatever you guys got going on, do you think you can take it somewhere else? Because I have a business to run. Remember I told you about Mr. and Mrs. Anderson, they have seen it all. They are pillars in this community. See, the store manager, he fucked up. He didn't know who he was messing with. He didn't know who was in his establishment. Mrs. Anderson got up. Mr. Anderson looked at him and said, baby, no, 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 don't worry about it. Mrs. Anderson said, no, 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 see, this is some good gossip. She said, right, baby, this is some good gossip. He said, and Mr. Anderson looked at his wife he said, he said, yeah, baby, this is some good gossip. And, and 
This is probably the best gossip that I have had in a long time. And these are two young people trying to figure life out. And we going to get to the bottom of this. So let me hold on, hold on, hold on. So Mrs. Anderson gets up to go talk to this store manager. So she gets up and she said, you, she said, you. And the store manager said, yes. He, she said, uh, come here, baby. And so he walks to Mrs. Anderson. So as he walking to uh, Mrs. Anderson, he's still trying to prove that he's dominant, that this is his store. Boy, he was in for a rude awakening. Mrs. Anderson said, baby. He said, yes. Now they're close now, the way they can talk to each other. He said, yes. Uh, baby, I'm going to need you to get your ass back in that goddamn kitchen, right? Because I've been in this community for over 47 years. And this is probably the best gossip that I have seen in real life. This ain't no TV show. You understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? He said, yes. He said, this ain't no TV show, baby. This is real life action. These are two beautiful souls trying to figure out life. And everybody in this restaurant is curious to know why this young lady is not marrying this good man. So what I need you to do, because we are going to figure it out. And we can't figure it out with your disruptions and your shenanigans. So take your ass back to that kitchen. And I'll let you know when we get all this cleared up. You understand what I'm saying? Now, the store manager, everybody looking at the store manager now, because if he gets, if he throws Mrs. Anderson out, the store going to get on his behind. But if he doesn't conduct his business, because there's people waiting in line, then he can potentially lose his job. Either way, he's going to lose, lose. He decided to take his ass back to the kitchen. And so Mrs. An Mrs. Anderson looked at him. She went like this. Because he was taking too long to answer. She's she trying to get back to Janice and David, she said. Uh, is there a problem? He said, well, just let me know. She said, yeah, yeah, get back there. Everybody regains their focus on Janice and David. Janice, once again, tells, do you think we can go? Mr. Anderson gets up. Mr. Anderson gets up now. Damien and Aaron, the two friends, they all looking too. They're like, what the hell is going on? Mr. Anderson gets up, he said, uh, young lady, not, you, I don't know if you just heard, my wife, she just expressed to the store manager that um, we're not going to move forward with our date unless we figure out what's going on between y'all two, because uh, like my wife said, we've been here 47 years, and this is probably the best gossip that we have had in a long time, and I'll be damned if you're going to leave all of these beautiful people minds in limbo that's not right for us that you get us excited because you got to remember y'all stopped what we were doing we all came here to get some coffee and eat our little pastries but your fiance got up and said hey i need you guys attention for a brief moment so you two stopped what we're doing and i'll be damned if i get stopped and get my hopes up. Now, you don't want to marry the boy. Now, I'm going to go sit down in my seat. And you owe it not only to me and my wife, but you owe it to all the beautiful people in here an explanation of why you don't want to marry David. Continue. So, Mr. Anderson, he struggles back to his seat. He sits down. He adjusts his bifocals, and he's looking intently. He tells Janice, Come on, come on with it. Janice put her head down and she said, David, I can't because I'm in love with somebody else. Aaron said, I knew it. I knew it. She a straight up thought in these streets, boy. I knew it. Aaron was telling Dam uh, Damien, I knew it. Damien could not believe what he was seeing. <laughs> This is the first time he's ever seen a proposal. This is the first time, and the first time he see a proposal, it goes down like this. Damien couldn't believe Aaron said, see, I can spot a thought, my, 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 my thought radar. I can spot a thought from 10 miles away. Damien said, how do you know? He said, this, this, this aura. I told you, bro, come on, come on. So, 
Damien and Aaron regain their focus. Everybody's looking. Everybody's shaking their head. And she started getting a little teary eyed. David said, You're in love with somebody else. What do you mean you're in love with somebody else? Now David's standing up. Now he's towering over. David is taller than Janice. He's towering over her. So he's looking down. What do you mean you're in love with somebody else? <sighs> David, it's just, it's, it's, it, it, it's complicated. That's how women do when they. When the men start checking them to get their back against the wall, David is just a little bit complicated. Uh, I, I, that's what I was trying to tell you this morning before we got here. That's what I was trying to tell you this morning. I had something to tell you. And you waited until now? David telling her. You waited until I bust out the ring to tell me this? When were you going to tell me this? She said, David, David. And he said, listen, listen, listen. Who is it? Everybody's looking. Mrs. Anderson, Mr. Anderson, Damien, Aaron, all the single people, all the other married couples, and they all looking. Ooh, this is good. People discreetly started recording. We live in a time of technology. A few people, they make it obvious. They started recording. They started recording. They started busting out their iPhones. They started busting out their galaxies. They started busting out the government phone. They busting out everything. They, they, they busting out. Hey, shut the fuck up. It's some good shit right here. Shut your goddamn mouth. She said, he said, who is it? Everybody's looking. Janice can feel the pressure in the restaurants. And she and she now she's now the tears are starting to come. She said, It's your cousin. Oh he said, What? What? David said, What? She said, It's your cousin. Boy, even the store manager, the store manager. Still had a few people. So the store manager was still bringing people in the store because he said, I got to make this money. So as the store manager was bringing people up, the store manager heard, he said, ooh, nasty bitch. Mm. Oh, would you like a latte? <laughs> people are coming in and they're hearing this. And, and the people that's coming to the restaurant, they they feeling this vibe, but they still want their damn coffee. The people, some people getting their coffee and leaving. Some people getting their coffee and staying. But everybody that was getting their coffee, they were staying. Because everybody was looking at yeah, them. They're ringing up, ringing up the order. And as the baristas that were making the coffee, they was listening to them too. Because they, you know, they still got to make sure it's a business. We got our business to run. And she says, uh, it was just a weird, a weird, <laughs> a really weird vibe. She said, it's your cousin. And they say, your cousin? She's sleeping with the cousin. Aaron told Damien again. This bitch is nasty, bro. I told you. I, my thought radar is strong. He said, my, my thought radar is strong. Now, I told you. She banging this dude's cousin. She's keeping it in the family. Damien's jaw is to the ground. Damien's jaw is on the ground. Mr. and Mr. Anderson, they are puzzled too. Like we, Everybody figured it was another man, but we wouldn't think it would be his cousin. His cousin, really? David was mad. He's like, I knew it. I knew it. I knew you was in love with Charles. I knew you liked Charles. Everybody, like, what's going on with Charles? What happened with Charles? I knew when I caught you two hugging at our family event, I knew you wanted Charles. When I broke up with you, you were saying, no, it wasn't like that. We wasn't like that. Oh, we were talking about you the whole time. We were talking about you the whole time. So there was a family gathering a year prior. And Charles is David's cousin. Charles is really suave. Charles has a good job just like David. They, they're kind of like brothers. They have a similar lifestyle. Charles got it going on. Charles is handsome and... Charles and David always had a little competition between them. Charles and David, they're actually uh, their favorite cousins. Like, you know, you have your favorite cousin that you always hang out with. Him and Charles are real close, but they're so close. Them being so close, they became competitive. So they're close. They're competitive. They're like brothers, but they're cousins. So he has a good job, nice cars. He's doing well for himself. And he's, you know, when you're competitive with somebody, you, you do feel like kind of threatened. So Charles was hugged up on Janice. Charles was hugged up on Janice 
but they really were talking about David. He was just hugging her, giving her a uh, his support for their relationship. So they were in the kitchen, and he hugged her like a sister hug, like he like welcoming her to the family. So he hugged her, and that's when David came in. He caught them hugging. And then him and David got into it. And Charles was like, no, 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 man. It's, it's not it's not like that. He said, I see your ass family. Like, I would never come in between you and your girl. What are you talking about? So him and Charles didn't speak for a little while. And then Janice did tell him, no, it's not like that. We were talking about you. He was just giving me his support. So, like I said, they were competitive. Just seeing that somebody, his family member, somebody he's, he's always competing with, somebody that he loves, hugging his woman. The first thing he's thinking that, you know, his cousin trying to go up in his girl, but it wasn't like that. So he said, I knew it. It was you and Charles when I caught y'all hugging. She said, no. She said, no, it's not Charles. It's not Charles. So now David's confused. David's like, well, what you mean it's not Charles? She's like, it's your other cousin. David is all kinds of confused. Everybody can see how puzzled David is. Damien, Aaron, the store manager, Mr. and Mrs. Anderson, they are all confused about what which cousin is he talking about? Because it was only three male cousins there at the family unit. It wasn't Charles and the other two cousins. They had their wives over there or their girlfriends. One is married and his other cousin, his older cousin. The older cousin is married. He's like in his late 30s. And his younger cousin, they're around the same age as him and his girlfriend. So it was Charles. Charles is single. It wasn't Charles. It wasn't his older cousin in the late thirties. He's married, and it wasn't his uh, younger cousin around his age, mid twenties, because his girl was there. I'm like, no, he was with his girl the whole. Like, who are you talking about? No, it's it's not none of them. It's Samantha, the store manager, <laughs> spilt coffee all over his goddamn hands. He's trying to take orders and he's eavesdropping. Everybody's looking. He eavesdropping. Poor coffee has got goddamn. Ah, oh, god damn it! So he runs his little fairy ass back there to go get him some uh, burn chemicals to treat himself. That's what his ass get for being so goddamn nosy. He's supposed to be running the damn store, but he's listening in on it too. The baristas couldn't believe it. David said, "What? Wait, what? What?" She said, "Yeah, it, it's your girl cousin Samantha." I'm in love with her. Aaron told Damien, Damien, Aaron said, now, I have a thought radar, but my thought radar did not pick that up. It did pick, Damien, <coughs> Damien was in speech as a whole time. Damien, Damien got himself together. Say, did she just say that she don't want to marry him because she's in love with his girl cousin, his female cousin? Aaron said, yeah, nigga, Mr. and Mrs. Anderson, they looking at each other. Mrs. Mr. Anderson looked at his wife. He said, baby, come here. She said, yes, baby. She said, a little bit closer. She said, yes, baby. She said, these young folks is freaky. You understand what I'm saying, baby? He said, these young folks are freaky. Let's continue. She was like, well, that day that you caught me and Charles, yes, Charles was telling the truth. He never came on to me. He would never disrespect you. But when I saw Samantha, it was just something about her that we just instantly connected. When I saw Samantha and we started talking, it's like she understands me. It's like she fulfills me. When I talked to Samantha that day, we exchanged numbers and I've been talking to her ever since. Talking to you, I mean, I love you, David, but... I'm in love with Samantha. And I'll be honest, we did go on a few dates since the family gathering. Since that time within the last year, we went on, on a few dates and I just love her. Like she completes me. And I don't really see myself being with you for the long term. Like you're good to me. You're nice to me. You you pretty much you are everything. A woman will want. Everybody's listening in the restaurant. Everybody's listening in the restaurant. You are pretty much the perfect guy. You are pretty much the perfect guy. All the women in there are like, what the? 
the men in there are like, you are the perfect guy, but you're just not the perfect guy for me. I'm sorry, David. David didn't know what to say. He didn't even know Janice was bisexual or gay. Wherever she is, he didn't have any idea who he has fallen in love with. David said, come on. He said, come on, let's go. Let me take you home. Mrs. Anderson called the store manager over. Everything went back to normal. Janice and David left the coffee shop. Everybody was talking. It's on film. It's on the iPhone. It's on the galaxies. It's on the government phone. Damien and Aaron. Damien said, I ain't never getting married. Damien told Aaron, I ain't ever getting married. He said, I told you, marriage is a sham. Mrs. Anderson called the store manager and said, you come here. He's like, yes. He's, she said, uh, now, aren't you glad you didn't disrupt this? Aren't you glad you listened to your elders? I know what I'm talking about, baby. Now, me and you can't agree that was some of the best gossip that we have seen in our lifetime. And the store manager said, well, I do have to admit, I did get burned listening to this. And I probably lost a few sales, but you're right. It, it was good, girl. He said, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mr. Anderson got on his phone and started texting his golf buddies. These hoes ain't lawyers. Lawyer, that's what it is. He said, baby, this is right. I'm about, to, I'm about to send Todd this text message. He said, that's that Chris Brown song, right, baby? And Mrs. Anderson looked at the looked at the text message to make sure Mr. Anderson was sending the right words. Said, these hoes ain't lost. She said, yes, baby. That, that's the Chris Brown song in Lil Wayne, right? She said, okay, I'm going to go ahead and send this. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Are y'all still excited about getting married? I'm gone.